ओके सो टुडे इट्स द लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस वर्कशॉप सो आई सो आई वॉन्ट टू डू टू थिंग्स आई आई प्रपोज दैट वी डू टू थिंग्स द फर्स्ट इज टू शो यू यूजफुलनेस ऑफ द पाथ व्यू पॉइंट वी विल प्रूव द पीआर वी conjecture right so so the path so the first topic for today is path proof of the prv conjecture so it's not a conjecture anymore it's a theorem and uh, the the uh, the, uh, the proof that we will give now via paths is not by any means the uh, the only proof nor was it the first proof um but it is interesting to notice that the conjecture we will st i'll state the conjecture uh, uh, um was uh, made in the 1960s by the way prv stands for uh, there is an indian connection here parthasarathi ranga rao varadarajan conjecture so varadarajan yeah conjecture uh, they, they were at uh, they were at isi kolkata at that time i think in the 1960s um and they wrote this uh, famous paper in the annals of mathematics uh, and where this conjecture comes from okay and uh, uh, it was proved it so this is in the mid 1960s okay uh, and um, it was proved uh, by shravan kumar and um, olivier mathieu so this is 19 66 i mean i'm not sure so sure about my sick last digit but okay so this is um around 1987 okay so you notice the gap right and the path proof dates from the path proof is from is due to little man in 1993 so what is the statement so the lr rule is uh gives you tells you how if i multiply to so recall the lr rule if i take the tensor product of two irreducible representations it if we have a way of um so lr rule gives you a way to compute these coefficients right and this morning amri uh, talked about how you can find uh, those one way of finding the coefficients in the sln in the gln case right um, so what you do is if you have if you recall you have a um, so you have the lambda yamanuchi words for uh, lambda and mu right so you take any you fix uh, so let me get the, try to get this right so suppose i want nu right so i want uh, c lambda mu nu what does this count so let me try to 
write it and correct me if I get, you know, if I don't get this right. So C lambda, so in the A case, just let me remind you from, from to this morning. Um, C nu lambda mu nu is equal to the number of um, words or number of tableau words of weight mu which when um, appended by a fixed Yamanuchi word of weight lambda is still Yamanuchi. Okay, so maybe this fixed, I, I'll put it in the beginning because it, this is fixed across the construction. So by, by, so, so by, sorry, this is a long gap, by, let's take W lambda. Okay, so what I do is W lambda is equal to fixed Yamanuchi word of weight lambda. So I fix a Yamanuchi word of weight lambda and then look at all tableau words of weight mu, which when appended by this fixed one is still Yamanuchi. I hope I got this right. Did I? Rigendra, is this okay? Okay, this is, so all that is, so of course, as you, as you can, as you perhaps are guessing, I am translating all this from the paths language. So let's do that, right? So what is it in the paths language? So you fix, so well, let me write, let me remind you of the LR rule in the path language. So what you do is C, okay, this is not just in type AN, this is the general LR rule, uh, little man's LR rule, path rule, is equal to number of, so, so you fix, um, pi, pi prime in P plus such that pi 1 is, uh, is equal to lambda and pi 2, sorry, pi prime 1 is equal to mu, okay. Then this is the number of parts in B pi prime such that pi, okay, I can say pi plus this um, plus uh, okay, I wrote this because I so so let's pi star uh, pi prime pi number of parts eta is uh, lives in dominant white chamber so is in p plus it is in p plus oh i forgot where is new in this right when uh, number of way a tumble which when appended by is still yamanuchi and the total of weight mu Eight. 
Uh, no, tableau, no, tableau words of, no, tableau is not of weight mu, this is of sh shape mu. That is the tableau is of shape mu and the total weight number of tableau words such that the total word total word has weight nu. Okay, so going back here. Okay, well, so where, what is the correspondence? So, I fixed a Yamanuchi word of weight lambda, right? That's like fixing la pi in pi plus with, so this part corresponds to this part. Okay, I am taking all tableau words of shape mu, meaning all tableau of shape mu, which is nothing but this, right? So ta tableaus are some special kinds of parts. So you are, you can, by the, the colored graph isomorphism, it does not matter what pi prime I take. Any pi prime that ends in mu and lives completely in the dominant wave chamber, the graphs are all isomorphic, okay? So I'm allowed to take any, anything in here, okay? So, so this is a particular choice, right? I, I take all tableau words of shape mu, meaning the tableau has shape mu, okay? And then which one appended, that is this concatenated, is Yamanuchi, meaning it lives completely in the dominant wave chamber such that this and, and of course, and uh, uh, pi plus pi is nu, and which end at nu. The concatenation must end at nu, right? That is this condition, the total weight is nu, okay? So this is the correspondence between these two, okay? So, um, okay, you have, okay, coming back here, no matter what, uh, what language you use here, right, this is in the language of Yamanuchi words, you may use uh, Littlewood Richardson tableau as uh, Mrigendra explained one week ago exactly on Saturday, okay. So, the, it's some language and this is the more general language. Okay, but it is, it's still far from, um, it's still hard to compute, meaning it's, it, uh, you know, given a nu, and if I ask you some arbitrary lambda mu and nu, and ask you how many copies of this nu are there, right, it's not so, such an easy thing to compute. Okay, there is an answer, there is a theoretical answer, right? It's not so easy to compute. But what we want to show is, I will state this conjecture and show you how the general statement, from the general statement, the conjecture sort of, the, the proof can be given in two, you know, very short proof can be given. Okay, so what is the conjecture? So, um, so here is a, so let me PRV conjecture. For W in W, so we, we are always using our fixed um, notation G is some symmetrizable Katsmudi algebra. Those didn't exist in 1966, so they made the conjecture for finite dimensional semi simply algebras but the statement is true and has been, this proof works in the general case. Okay, for W in the while group, um, V 
lambda plus so lambda and mu are uh, um, dominant weights occurs in v lambda tensor v mu. This is the statement. So, what does lambda plus w mu? So, lambda plus w mu bar means the following. So, lambda is some dominant weight, mu is another dominant weight of which you are taking the, you are taking the tensor product of the corresponding irreducible representations. What is lambda plus w mu? w mu is another weight, is the w translate of mu. Okay? If mu lives in the dominant weight chamber, w mu will live in some other chamber. Okay? So, lambda plus w mu is another weight. What does this mean? For this to make sense, this, remember this must be a dominant weight. So, and this is any, every weight has a unique while conjugate in the dominant weight chamber. That is what this represents. So, this is the unique while conjugate, conjugate meaning it is the unique element in the while group orbit, unique while conjugate of lambda plus w mu in the dominant y chamber. That is the definition. Okay? Now, let us understand this in terms of an example. So, as usual, I am fond of this writing this picture. So, let me try to draw this. Let me Okay, the example I've chosen is okay. As usual, this is my H beta and this is my H alpha. Okay, this is the origin. So, this is beta, this is the root beta, this is the root alpha, these are the simple roots. Okay. This is lambda. Okay. So, what is lambda? This is epsilon uh, 1, this is epsilon 2, sorry, this is omega 1, this is omega 2. This is the first fundamental. So, the first remember the fundamental weight is uh, per is per is go is one away from the is at a distance one from the one of the sim one of the uh, simple hyperplanes but belongs to all the rest okay so so it must belong to this uh, this hyperplane but and at a distance one from this from this so this this is distance one this is distance 2 from this line, from this line. From this line, this is distance 1, this is distance 2, this is distance minus 1, etc. Remember that. Okay. So, uh, that is my lambda and my, let me take my mu to be, uh, so I should be ok. So, I, I will not draw mu itself. We will worry about that. Um, I will draw W mu. So, let me see. Let us just do this example. 
we can do any example but i this worked out pretty it it worked very well for the in illustration that's why I'm, so this is lambda sorry this is lambda plus w so what is w mu w mu is this line okay so this is lambda this is lambda plus w mu okay please tell me what lambda plus w mu bar is what this is so what should i do for that M mu is i don't know what it is uh, we can work it out okay uh, let's do that Sh shamik asks what mu is can we first work out what mu is so what is what is what is w mu w mu is 4 so it's w mu is uh, w mu is this is this if I got that right I'm one two three four five steps so from here one two three four five steps right so w mu is this so tell me what mu is what should you do you should apply reflections or rotations whatever and bring it to the dominant wild chamber okay so what will you apply first along h alpha if you along h alpha if you go then what what will happen you will get reflected there this is h alpha this is the you so if i reflect this line along h alpha i'll go there somewhere okay and then if i reflect it along h beta i will go here somewhere that will be my okay so is that clear okay i i'm not drawing you because that's not so relevant for the um pardon me mu is phi omega 2 ah yeah Our, that's how did he get that so easily very good how did he get that so easily you don't always have to reflect so see what is this this is the symmetry you know symmet what is this uh, dihedral group d3 which is the same as the symmetric group s3 so rotations by 120 degrees are there so if i rotate this by 120 degrees it will go into this line and that's how that's one way of getting so one two three four five thank you so that's that's me okay since my rectangles are not exactly equilateral my triangles are not equilateral exactly it's not it was not so easy for me to see that it <laughs> but it is if you rotate it by is this clear so mu is this but what is relevant for the our purposes is this lambda plus mu and what is its conjugate so what should i do now so do the same thing but let's work it out now that is relevant for us so so what should I do? Huh? You can rotate by 120 degrees. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Okay. So, since my since my angle my triangles are not exactly equilateral, it's hard for me to work with angles. Correct. I could just rotate it by 120 degrees. So, let me just try to reflect because reflection is easier in my picture. Okay. So, if I reflect this in H alpha, where will I go? Here. This is this is this is 60. This is also 60. So, I go three steps to the here. Here I go okay although my in my picture it looks strange hmm? 
and then I reflect in H beta to go there. Okay, so th let's mark this in a color. So this is lambda. lambda plus w mu bar which is s beta first applied and then s alpha sorry first s alpha and then s beta applied to w plus lambda plus w in this case this picture okay this is clear so what is the what is the conjecture saying what is what what is the conjecture saying in this case? So, if I take the, the tensor product, so mu is here, okay, we know where mu is now, thanks to. So, we, this is lambda, okay, this is, we know where mu is. I said it is not so relevant, but now that we have computed it, let us use it, okay. So, in this tensor product, so here, this is my lambda origin, this is my lambda. So, there is a irreducible representation corresponding to this, there is an irreducible representation corresponding to this and in their tensor product there is a copy of this, this is the claim. Okay. Is the claim clear? You have to find, you do not have to find a path, but if you do find a path then you are done, then you are done. Okay. There may be other means of doing it, but if we, if, correct, absolutely, if we want to do it via paths, the only way seems like you have to find a path. What kind of a path? Okay, this is, uh, you know, lambda and mu are symmetric, I can do one or the other. Okay, let us, since I have, let us keep the same, uh, so I must look at all paths of shape mu, right. This is some horrible set. I mean, I take this straight line to mu, start with that, and then apply my f alpha, e alpha, f1, e1, uh, say, let us say e1 will not matter because I start with the topmost guy. So, I apply f1, f2, various f1, f2, I get a whole set of paths. Okay. This is some uh, very uh, large number of paths, right. And then the claim is I one of those paths if I append to this so so of course all, all of those paths start at the origin right but I shift that path and put it here there is at least one path which when I shift it here will lie entirely in the dominant oil chamber and end here, right. So, it means it, go, it may go something like this, does not come down and then comes here, right. This is what I have to show. This can the paths, uh, ah, they can, okay, there you go. We have an expert. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so that's um, uh, maybe we'll see an example of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but maybe we'll we'll see it right here. Right. Okay. So what uh, so what is okay? Here is the stupid idea. Okay. So, now how am I going to do with paths? So, let us think very stupidly, right. So, I can I get a path ending here? See, what is after all, what is this? This is some strange, some strange thing in the dominant chamber, some weight, right. How is it defined? It is defined as the conjugate of this, correct, ok. So, let me do the following. Let me forget about as a first step, can I get a path? of shape mu which when I append to lambda lands me in lambda plus omega mu. So, I so I must get a path which ends here when I append it to lambda. So, which path is it that when I append it to lambda gets me here? It is this path from here to here. 
it is the straight line path to omega mu does the is that a path of shape mu remember okay so the, is the straight line path to omega uh, w mu i sorry i keep saying omega mu i mean w mu uh, w and omega w equals omega for me <laughs> there's no omega luckily for in this talk okay so is there a path straight line path leading to w mu that's the question shape is the end point in the dominant wild chamber omega mu is not definitely not going to be in the dominant wild chamber i mean I, of course i can take w to be identity but that's the uninteresting case ha ah. ha ah. no but okay we'll come to that but for initial Ah, but ah, using that, see, does W mu occur as a weight in V mu? Definitely, because uh, mu is a weight, and the set of weights is invariant under W. Therefore, W mu is definitely a weight. What is the multiplicity of the W mu? Same as the multiplicity of mu. How mu how appears how many times in V mu? One time. So what is the shape? What is the way, multiplicity of W mu in V mu? One. Okay. So how many paths do you expect of shape mu that end at W mu? One. Okay. One one path. What can that path be? We have used this argument before. I mean, in the finite dimensional case, see because W mu is as far from the origin as mu. and you are not changing the you know all parts of the same shape have the same length so the only way to get to w mu is to go straight there no other choice hmm? that's the only way you can get from by by a straight line path of length equal to this because w mu is just as far from the origin okay okay so and 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 how do i get that path all i do is apply the while group as uh, satish was suggesting take the straight line path and apply the while group element to the path okay so apply w to this path okay in any case there is this path right okay we want a we want a path to the conjugate correct ha huh, but what is alpha is beta no no wait a second no, no by uh, so you may be saying the right thing i just want you to be yeah, say, right so i do have a path uh, uh, i do have a path of shape mu that gets me to lambda plus w mu namely this path in the sense that when i append it to lambda i get to lambda plus w mu what i want is a now a path of shape mu which when i append it to lambda gets me here what could i possibly do you uh, you should think along the same lines as you were thinking or you two i mean i think you had the right idea both of you you could okay that's one way okay but there is even you know even more of a uh stupid way you know the the naive the naivest guess works
Ah. So, yeah. no, I'll give you two more minutes to think about. Because this is the most important part. This, you know, there is nothing to the proof. Once you state this, you then you, the rest is just working things out and it's not very long. Huh. Remember, remember, when I apply reflection to a path, the whole path does not get reflected. It's only portions of it which get reflected. Keep this in mind. Okay? But one thing, let me also remind you of the very important thing. When I apply W to a path, an element W of the while group to a path, its end point, if it was something to begin with, it becomes W times that. It's just W, it's the lift of the action on the endpoints. Okay? So, what could I possibly do? I have a path ending here, namely this. I want a path ending here. Okay? So, what could I do? Just apply S beta S alpha on this entire path and see what I get. You know, I mean, no, nothing lost. No, no, no loss. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, nothing lost, right? It's a, it's a hard problem to be doing, right? So, so the naive thing to expect is, look, I take this path and apply S alpha tilde, S beta tilde to the path. Right? Okay. Of course. It must uh, um, it must work out correctly. Okay, that is there. Huh? But surely it will end here. No, not, no doubt about that. Correct. Okay. So let us try it. Okay, let's try it. So guess is. When good, good. You are already thinking why this will not change the lambda part. Okay, good. But let's just do it. Okay, correct, correct. I agree with you. So, so the naive idea is apply W star to pi lambda concatenate this. Correct? The pi straight line paths to lambda and then straight line paths to w mu and then I apply the while group element and hope for the best. Which, uh, sorry. <coughs> ah, w tilde, okay, I am using tilde because, sorry. At the lift, okay, you can you can you can dispense with that if you wish. Is that okay? There, there is a while group action on the on the paths which we use W, you know, S alpha tilde used it. Okay, so you can you can erase that if you don't like it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thanks, Murugendra. I didn't realize. Okay. Thank you. So, let us write this as um, u times lambda plus w mu. u is s alpha s beta in this case. And I, I mean u tilde. Thank you. I didn't realize. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. So, u is such that 
so fix u such that lambda plus w bar is equal to u applied to lambda plus w. Okay. That's the now let us just do it, do it in this case and see. So here is my path. So can somebody please tell me? So what should I apply? I should apply in this case by the same. Let's check it out, right? We have the idea. Let's check it out in this example and then worry about proving it. So what should I apply? S alpha tilde to this path. So I'm applying S alpha tilde to this path. How do I apply S alpha tilde to a path? So let me remind you that if the path endpoint, so it, it must be a lift of the, recall how we defined it. It must be a lift of the action on the weights. Okay? So if the weight is such that it gives on alpha check it is negative, I apply say minus m, then I apply f alpha m times. If it is positive, then I apply e alpha m times to the path. That's the, that, that way it works out correctly and it will be a lift of the action on the endpoints. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, if it is negative, then I apply, let me say E alpha. Okay, if it is positive, then I apply F alpha. Correct. So I have to apply S alpha tilde. So, so to this path, right? So I must look at my H graph, right? H alpha check. Okay, like I said, there is no need to draw this each time. Okay, you can just look at how far you are getting away from this plane. That's all you're doing, right? So what are you doing? Here all you're on the positive side, right? So it's positive, po so imagine the graph in your head. It's positive, positive, positive. It becomes zero and then it starts going in the negative direction, right? How far does it go? One, two, three steps, meaning it goes up to minus three in some straight line right in some whatever this time was it took it went down minus 3 right so my end graph looks like looks like this right if this is my h alpha i'm drawing i'm trying to draw h alpha of this path right it looks like one this is minus 3 right that's how it looks right Sorry, I, uh, minus three, but I'm applying a E alpha. I'm applying E alpha. Thank you. <laughs> I'm applying E alpha. Okay. So what do I do, need to do? I need to, which parts get and how many times? Three times, right? Okay. So how many? Uh, so which part gets reflected? This whole leg gets reflected. Correct. Okay. So. Instead of, so let me use my colored chalk now. So instead of this path, right? So, so this is my original, up to this, this was original. But now, this part, part gets reflected. And where do I get it? Where do I go? I go three steps. to this, correct? So it is this path now. Sorry for my uh, triangles not being correct. Okay, now what, so I'm finished with applying S alpha, S alpha tilde. So I should apply S beta tilde. So how do I now, once again, I look at the graph. This is my H beta. So I just look at, so for the beta value, I keep checking. So it's above, above, above. And then here it goes to minus one. Okay, so the picture looks like 
this case I am applying h beta now to this path, right? And then it's something, something positive, and then it goes minus 1. This, this is the rough shape of this, okay? So again, I apply s s beta. So how many times? So what is the so s beta is s, s beta check or s beta tilde? Sorry, and I have to apply e alpha or f alpha, f alpha depending on that. In this case, would you apply e alpha or f alpha? E beta. Sorry, e beta or f beta? E beta. How many times? Once, right? E beta once. So this, so that this part gets reflected, and lo and behold, that becomes positive. Okay, so, okay, so, where, so, what is that that portion of the path for me in this? From here to here, right? Okay. So finally, after one more step, let me see if I have different color. So. I get where I want. Okay, so it is not surprising that I get to where I want. That was expected. I already know that without doing the calculation. Okay, but the calculation gives me hope that I have the correct meaning. It worked out in this case, right? Correct. And so, what is my answer? Is there a path of shape mu which when I append to lambda will get me here. The answer is just take this path, what is here. It must be a path of shape mu. What is the proof of that? Why should that be a path of shape mu? Because ha. Huh. Okay, or more, okay, here is what you should remember that E alpha applied to if, if my paths are good, if they have this minimal integrality property and uh, uh, end at integral weights, etc., which all our paths are, have, that, have those properties, then this is either goes to the first or goes to the second, right? We have acted it only on the, it's as if it's going to the second, right? So it's either first or the second. It's clearly going to the, uh, uh, let me use different. So it's, this is E alpha sigma this or E alpha so sigma E alpha eta, if, so depending on something. Huh? But since it's going to the second, it might, so, uh, it's, this is happening, and so this path here must be E alpha, some some combination of E alpha. You don't care, applied to pi mu, right? Because this was this path was obtained. This is after all in in the crystal or the B pi in the path model corresponding to B. the straight line path belongs to B mu. And I've applied E alpha three times and E beta once. And so that, that also is a path of shape, okay? So I have, so that's the idea of the proof, okay? Yes. So in the proof of this, yes. Yes, it is this path. Exactly. 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 See, okay. Okay. Correct. Let's, uh, um, uh, what Aritra is saying is in the proof of the LR rule, what we did was we, uh, uh, you know, we wanted to, uh, the idea was every, so we, we had this concatenation of paths of shape pi, uh, shape lambda and paths of shape mu, 
right, the concatenation. That was a path model for the tensor product. And we wanted to break it up as a disjoint union of um, disjoint union, which are each piece being closed under the root operators. So, correct? If you remember, B, B lambda or B pi 1, whatever I wrote. Did I write B pi? Doesn't matter. B lambda, B mu is equal to disjoint union of B nu, right? This is what we wanted to write, right? How do you do this? You take this, take, take one path and try to f find which B nu it belongs by applying E alphas to it, E mu to it, okay? And drive it to the dominant chamber. That's the idea, okay? And from the theorems that we had done about paths, it was clear that each, uh, I, there is no matter what path you choose, if you start, that is if you, if you, what route you choose, you start from a given path and no matter if you may have applied E alpha, I may have applied E beta, etc., we'll get to the same point at the end, right? And that is the unique path in the dominant wild chamber which belongs to this uh, model and, uh, and such a path must necessarily be of the form pi, the straight line path to lambda, and something and a path of shape mu. Okay, so uh, indeed that is, if you started out with this um, thing, and there we of course blindly applied E alpha, E beta any number of times. Okay, and I didn't care about where it ended in the dominant wave chamber. Okay, here I want it to end in a particular point. Okay, so I am being a little more careful. Is that clear? Okay, but you are right. That is very, very much the you know it's a more careful way of doing it in this particular case. Okay, so this is so this seems like it is working, right? So I need a proof of this. I need. I now want to prove this. Right. Okay, so so after a while, what you realize is the okay. So le let me also make a very important definition. Okay, um, although we will not have much uh, use for this, I am mentioning this so that to point out the importance of this, okay? So what is an extremal path? So definition, is a definition. A path in P lambda, uh, sorry, in B lambda, Path pi, or use pi is used many times. Eta is called extremal if the unique dominant path eta tilde that is obtained by applying E alphas two eta has the following property is such that eta one look at the end point eta one so eta is some path it ends somewhere okay 
eta 1, then I take the dominant conjugate of that, dominant conjugate of where it ends, okay. That must give me So these are two different things. See, eta tilde is the dominant path of which this is the um, of which to which eta belongs to to whose crystal eta belongs. That is, eta tilde is obtained by applying E alphas to eta. Okay. There is no reason for that to end at the conjugate of eta 1. If it happens, then you call such a path extremum. Okay? Now, so, which one? Hmm. Eta 1, a bar is the dominant while conjugate of eta 1. That is always the notation. Unique while conjugate of this in the dominant while chamber. That is the, so it is the dominant element, I, I mean it is the conjugate of that in the dominant while chamber. Okay. So, uh, I, uh, okay, I realize this may be a little technical for you, but the idea is the following. So, if I have, so this is what is exactly happening here. Okay, so I, what I what I want to find is I want to find an extremal path that ends at lambda plus w mu. Right, I want to find an extremal path that ends at lambda plus w mu. If I did that, then I drive it drive that path to the dominant white chamber. Then it will end where? It will end at the conjugate of this. That's all. Okay. So, in other words, the importance of this is the following. See, uh, given a certain eta, it is not so easy to say whether it, ap it appears in the tensor product or at least if you know any theorem like this we are most interested in. If you can tell me, oh, this particular eta come appears in the tensor product, that is an interesting fact. Okay. So, what this says is, one way to get such theorems is by looking for an extremal path which uh, you know if if uh, for example here is an example where nu is nu is uh, given as the conjugate of some element if i can find an extremal path that ends here i am in business right that's all it's asking for then i know that i have new the, uh, the its conjugate appears as a new because I uh, this eta tilde will 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 do the job. Need not. Uh, eta tilde will look like definitely eta tilde is lambda star because any dominant path is definitely lambda star something yes yes that you can say yes. Okay, so what is the idea of the proof? So, so let me write out the here is the here is the proposition. Suppose we have a path ending at lambda plus w mu. Okay. Oh, before I write it, let me also explain. Um, as uh, Aritra was trying to guess, 
see what he's trying to guess is is a very good good thing see he was saying okay it lives completely in the dominant shell door for a while and afterwards it comes down and becomes negative right so when i apply my s alpha tilde to it i am going to apply it only to this part right so it becomes or e alpha sorry e alpha yeah s alpha tilde which is just e alpha some amount of e alpha it becomes positive it becomes right okay so the it will go down enough if see it has to go down because otherwise it is already in the dominant wave chamber and i'm done so the fact that it is not in the dominant wave chamber means that there exists an alpha for which it before it will go down right and if the end always goes down in a straight line right like this when i apply e alpha to it it goes up like that right okay and all this part belongs in the dominant wave chamber and extra bit also may belong in the dominant wave chamber but then there may be it may cross another wall like for example that's what happened here when i reflect so here when i took this when i this part got reflected so now what look at the reflected part now from here it continues to live in the dominant chamber for a while but then decided to go out okay but then once more i reflect i am completely in okay okay so the idea is this is this is in fact the right idea so if if it is going out of the dominant wave chamber in a straight line then it it does in fact do the job and that is the proposition this is so you know that's a good guess because that is the idea of the proof okay suppose we have a path ending at mu lamb suppose only its last segment its last straight line segment comes out if any its last straight line segment if any comes out of the dominant wave chain then sigma eta so sigma is a while group element so i apply sigma to that eta and look at it in its end point it is this where sigma in w is such that sigma lambda plus w mu is equal to lambda plus w. okay let's try to prove this so in other words if only the last segment goes out then it is extremum that's what we are saying okay so let's prove this induction so proceed by induction all such proofs have this thing they proceed by induction on the length of sigma on the length of the least um such sigma that is aha yeah 
sigma eta is I mean sigma tilde eta. Okay, I drop that. If you want, I put at sigma tilde. Okay. Hmm? I'm I'm putting the bracket here. Oh oh. Uh. Sorry. Ah. Ah ah. Okay. Then um, sorry. Thank you. That's what I am. Yeah, eta is an extremal path. Yes, I can. Uh, that's what I mean. Yes, but more precisely, I get to I, the extremal path is just uh, sigma tilde applied to eta. Okay, correct. Okay, sorry. Thanks. So induction on the least such sigma. So if uh, if that length is zero, then what does that mean? Which means lambda plus w mu is equal to lambda plus w mu bar. The sigma is length zero, meaning it is one. It is identity. In that case, let us read this theorem. Then this, which means just that lambda plus w mu belongs to the dominant white chain. Right. Look at eta. Eta ends at lambda plus w mu. And at most, its last straight line segment is away from the dominant white chain. These two conditions put together tell you what? Eta is completely in the dominant white chain. It cannot possibly have a last leg outside the dominant wave chamber if its end is not in in the dominant wave chamber, right? Okay. So if the, then clearly eta itself lives in the dominant wave chamber, correct? It's rather trivial. Okay. So now let's induct. So let's choose. Suppose that the length is bigger than 1, right? Sigma is equal to S alpha this with uh, L of sigma prime less than L of sigma. Okay, you can always find alpha simple. Then, correct, correct, V lambda plus mu occurs. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. That is straight because you take the straight line path to lambda and the straight line path to mu. And in fact, that is the only path which ends at lambda plus mu. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, then lambda plus w mu alpha check is less than 0. So this just follows from basic uh, while group combinatorics. So what you are saying is, I am choosing sigma of the least length. 
So I'm choosing sigma of the least length. Right? Sigma is least such that I can okay. So choose so if my length is um, okay. Yeah, sigma has the least length, and therefore if I See, if lambda plus w alpha on alpha check, what does this mean? If, alpha, if say, this is my h alpha, this is the positive side and this is the negative side, then this weight must appear on the negative side. Must appear on the negative side because sigma has the least length with this property. And when I apply s alpha, it is it's having fewer, lesser, it's becoming, the length is becoming less. This precisely means that sig this element to which I am applying lives on the negative side. Okay? Otherwise, you can do without applying the alpha, which means you can, <laughs> which, which is not of least length. Okay? Okay. So now, now you just apply. Sigma. No, I mean. No, I, I. This is correct. So, if I have an element, so what? So. So, forget what this this lambda plus w mu is just a weight. If that weight is, if I need to act by sigma to get it to the wild chamber, and sigma is of least length, and alpha is such that sigma, when I apply it to alpha, when I apply alpha to sigma, it decreases, then this must, this weight must be on the negative side of, for example, for example, your weight could be here. Let's take a simple example your weight could be here, right? What did you apply to, to bring it to the dominant weight chamber? What do you apply? S beta. So sigma would be S beta, OK? And what would I choose here? This alpha would be beta, correct? And sigma prime would be identity. And this, this weight, for any such thing, this, that weight has to be on the negative side of this plane. Okay, okay. Now, so now, um, now you are almost done. It is what uh, Arithro's idea. Now the rest of it. So now, just look at if I want to apply, consider S alpha tilde eta. Okay, eta starts at the origin. So this is, OK, so and goes somewhere here. So this is my h alpha I'm trying to compute. So I'm, I'm trying to apply this, right? Yes. Did I make, yes, we're going to. Ah. Oh, this is wrong. You're saying, huh? So that. Okay. Uh, one second. Ah, uh -huh, I, I. Uh oh. One second. Ah, and then I apply. Uh, 
OK, no, one second, one second. One second, maybe I got the order wrong. I got the order wrong. Mm. One second. No, I maybe I've gotten the order wrong there. One second. First I applied H alpha, and then it beta. Okay. Okay. So, 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 here, that's the resolution. Put it on the other side. Okay? Put it on the other side. Thanks. Okay? okay. So, I got this one. You should just put it on the other side. Okay? Um, now, let us apply S alpha tilde, okay? <coughs> Thanks. Thanks for catching that, okay? Now, you see, it is straight line path at the, at the end, going out of the dominant white chamber, right? So, and this part is straight going out into the dominant white chamber are going out of the dominant white chamber, right? So that entire path, that entire path I reflect, okay? And remember all this is in the dominant white chamber and this part gets reflected, right? So my S alpha tilde eta again satisfies these uh, hypothesis. Okay, the, so the is this clear? So it goes out in the it's going out in a straight line. So when I s shift it up to here, it was so the shift is a straight line, and up to here it is already in the dominant well chamber. May, so maybe it continues to be in the dominant well chamber for a while, but then maybe decides to go out. But that's okay because it's only in the last segment, like here. Okay, so to finish, all we need to do is S alpha um, tilde eta. Uh, if if it is not in the dominant oil chamber, then only its last segment. is not so, okay? That is one thing. And the other thing is, of course, S alpha tilde eta, S alpha tilde eta one is alpha, oh, sorry, S alpha applied to eta one. Eta one was lambda plus W, can you check? Okay. And now I can now, I'm done by induction because sigma prime of lambda plus, so finally to finish, observe. S, sorry, sigma prime lambda plus S alpha of lambda plus W mu is equal to sigma of S alpha of lambda plus W mu is equal to 
Um, by induction, so what do I know by induction? So I apply the induction to this path now, right? S alpha tilde eta is ending at lambda plus uh, Yes. Uh, okay. 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 So I. So maybe maybe this lambda plus w mu is a problem. Let us just let me say just cancel this out, and write any weight. Any weight. So let let's just write. Um, should I use mu eta? New, what is a what's a good letter for a weight? Suggest a good letter for a weight, please. Lambda dash. Lambda dash. Okay. So. Okay. Just let's make that. So this is lambda dash. I, I don't care if it is of that form. Okay. So observe sigma prime. So by induction on S alpha tilde eta. So S alpha tilde eta is this. So let's check now. So it is ending at lambda prime. Mm. So that lambda prime has changed. Doesn't matter. That so S alpha theta it ends at S alpha lambda prime. Okay, fine. It's some weight. Suppose only its last straight line segment comes out of the dominant weight chamber. That S alpha eta has that property. Okay, then the claim is this belongs to the dominant wave chamber. We have all, because the induction by induction this uh, sigma prime has length. So observe sigma prime um, lambda s alpha lambda prime is sigma of lambda prime is equal to lambda prime check. Right since length of sigma prime is length less than length of sigma i conclude by the induction that so so this again by induction we have this is induction Sigma prime S alpha tilde, right, belongs to the dominant wild chamber. Okay, but what is this? This is because it's a wild group action. Ha ha yeah. Ha, but la S alpha lambda dash is 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 any weight. So I'm 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 applying the induction on any weight. So so the statement should be: suppose we have a path eta ending at any weight 
lambda any weight lambda dash ok. Then I hope I am making it clear. So, lambda dash is you, know, you are varying the statement over all lambda dashes ok, you are not fixing the lambda dash. So, when I apply the induction it is for a different lambda dash ok, but that is ok. Ok, I think maybe we should just uh, stop here, uh, it is time, thank you for your attention and we have the tutorial still, so ok.